university where future is driven by imagination. Experiential learning creates diverse opportunities, where industry exposure and international partnerships help you sail. Come, start your journey towards success with Amrita University. Ladies and gentlemen, namaste and a very warm welcome to all of you to the Blub World Web Talks 163rd episode. In the last 162 episodes, we have talked to, interacted with more than 3,000 school leaders from all across the world where they've shared their ideas, opinions, innovations and what all new are they doing in the education space. So today as well, the 60 minutes that we have with you, we'll try to take your opinions, your ideas and what do you think is going to change in the education space. Most importantly, this platform is a bilingual platform, so you can use English or Hindi, any of these two languages in the next 60 minutes. Try sticking to these two, but if you want to use a third one, you can, but I won't get it. Most importantly, consider the web, Love World Web Talks kind of a speaking sprint. It's not a speaking marathon. So once your speaking time is over, you might get muted. If you get muted, please don't get offended. This is just to finish the activity on time and keep it crisp and enjoyable for everyone else. All the audience who's there on the call, if you want to ask any questions, if you want to do any sort of interaction, you can put it in the chat. We'll try to answer your questions and your queries while we go through the complete talk. Once again, a very warm welcome. I am Daksh, the founder of Blub World. A very warm welcome to all the guests to the Blub World Web Talks 163rd episode. Today, let's talk about making learning impact driven. Now, where does this impact and learning actually come together? Or is there a need of these two to come together because till now, learning for us was just out of satisfaction or was for employment or was for attaining a state of wisdom. But all this, does it really correlate to impact or is our focus in the learning process really impact? Because now when we are in these lockdowns, now when we are trying to redefine life, we are all able to get this small little creepy feeling that whatever we did, some or the other way went in vain. So did it actually went in vain or there is some more possibility, some more innovation waiting just outside our door to come in. Let's try to find it from all of you. Is there a need to make learning impact driven or you think it's already quite impactful? Thank you once again, everyone for joining in. It's Blub World Web Talks, the 163rd episode. Let me invite the first speaker for today to add the bird's eye view to the topic, to the perspective. Somebody who comes from the higher education space, Dr. Shori Kutappa, the academic manager and counselor, Office of Chairman Admissions and Outreach for Amrita Vidya Peetham from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Shoriji, over to you for the next three to four minutes to initiate the topic on making learning impact driven. A very warm welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to take a leaf from uh, uh, the way you opened it. Until today, like you said, um, you know, learning has always been uh, has always had these two or three objectives, getting a job and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to try to connect these two areas. One, you know, learning from the side of where it is coming from, the organization, the education system, so on. And the other side, the receivers, the students who are actually aspiring for it. I'm going to use two existing concepts. One is the Bloom's taxonomy and one is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs edited to the student's uh, perspective yeah so when is a student actually ready and in a receiving mode uh, one when is his or her psychological needs are met the student has had his fill of breakfast has clean clothing a safe place to go home to maybe able to sleep safety needs next when uh, you know in students context emotional and uh, physical safety when uh, uh, he has a clear school or class routines, access, he has access to counselors, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, uh, he, the student knows that it's okay to take risks. Belonging comes next when, uh, you know, the student is actually forming relationships, uh, be it advisory relationships or seeking adult role models, friendship groups, peer relationships, and so on. Next, esteem when you know the student has a positive uh, class uh, culture uh, he has uh, you know uh, acquired the skills to lead to honor and he's received uh, the recognition or he knows where his place stands 
and post that the student reaches if i may use the word self actualization where uh, the student is now you know uh, ready to live to his or her highest potential so this is one side where you uh, you know when uh, the person is uh, ready to uh, receive the most impact from the education system on the other side is the bloom's taxonomy where we say uh, you know it's a pyramid we are all aware as teachers where it says create evaluate analyze apply understand and remember you uh, create produce new or original work justify and stand on your decision where you evaluate you draw connects among the ideas where you are analyzing use information in new situations that's how you apply it next you understand you explain the ideas or concepts make sure it is in a receivable mode and lastly remember you aid recall of these ideas concepts or whatever the content of the material that you are trying to teach so when these two when these two sides you know these two triangles the tips of the triangles actually come and meet you have your impact driven system um thank you i rest with that thank you so much dr sorry and i think you made two very nice uh, illustrations in front of us one being the mass mass laws hierarchy and the other one being uh, bloom's taxonomy rather typically bringing in the practicality aspect aspect of it and the idealistic aspect of it what it should be what it ought to be and what it actually is the way we look at things the way we want to uh, you know trudge our life through this complete journey most importantly at this point i would like to simply add a small point to it that when we talk of all these things when we talk of maslow's hierarchy when, when we talk of bloom's taxonomy they have all been taken some or the other way from the human behavior and they are organically ingrained in us normally we do these things but when you look at the objective of education when you go into your very institute your in school your college are you actually looking at education or learning with the perspective of impact or just with the perspective of utility these are the two differences that we are going to talk about in the next 60 minutes from the school leaders that we have now is it only the utility of learning that's going to come out or are we focusing on or is it the idealistic aspect of it that we really want to bring in or is it impact that we want to make through this learning so let me invite the first school leader for today to share their thoughts on making learning impact driven a very warm welcome ms preetha abram principal of greenfield chennai international school from chennai tamil nadu preetha ma'am over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute your audio and a very warm welcome yeah thank you in the domain of human resource development school education uh, plays a very important role education transforms individuals to become resources of great impact and later an asset to the local community or the society at large earlier in the gurukul days education was knowledge of archery to astrology everything they learned at the guru's place then is modern education set in knowledge distribution or rather the disbursement of knowledge was gathered in the course of learning for several years a particular teacher or an individual would gain from the ug or pg degrees and as a teacher would impart it was the model of education but now we see a paradigm shift in the way education is imparted we don't just teach concepts but we also instill in them the skill of application of this knowledge this is very very important and schools have now gone further from the traditional approach to embracing a newer approach of innovating new methodologies of teaching and learning as we all now uh, unanimously believe that only education can bring about a change in tomorrow's society we now focus upon the life changing concepts being transacted in the classroom we need to embrace an outcome based approach outcome based education is a process of restructuring of curriculum assessments and documenting it for achievement of learning by every student it can be summed up as a result oriented method that is learning be achieved i am not stating here in terms of marks but what learning that is required as a life skill for the child to be an employable in the later years or to live his life you know survival skill some may put it but i will not put it across as a survival skill as the term means it so uh, so if when it comes to learning or teaching in the school it has to be there has to every teacher has to have a clarity of focus which means teachers to have a clear focus on what they want the students to learn from every lesson what they want to know uh, the uh, that is what are the skills they want them to develop the personality they want them to 
take or achieve. That is very, very important. Uh, and the schools uh, also have to think that not only that do they have a good clarity of thing, but the curriculum design itself has to be changed in such a way that the intended outcomes are clearly achieved by the students at by the end of the program. Then only the instructional design can be uh, assured as being achieved by every student in a, in a classroom of 40 or I will not say 60 and all because we would say ideally the tech classroom should be a size of 32 or 35. So in a classroom of 35, we cannot assure that every child would have learned even in a physical school. Now, how do we do it in online is something that is very monumental task in front of every teacher who sits in front of a monitor. So teachers have to, uh, you know, redesign the curriculum in such a fashion. Teachers should also establish high challenging standards of performance is in order to encourage students to engage uh, deeply in what they are learning, helping students to achieve high standards that are linked with very closely with the idea that successful learning promotes some more successful learning. This is the idea. And there should be expanded opportunities that should be provided to uh, students. Teachers must try. Thank you so much, Preetha. Ma'am, the first three minutes were over. Let me try to summarize what you said. We'll again come back to you during the open session. So you started with from skills to application from life-changing concepts coming now to the classroom. Now we are actually talking about higher order skills. Then you talked about learning to be achieved and achieved equan with equanimity within the whole classroom. That is every student able to achieve that same level of learning or is, this, is there a learning gap that's getting created with every other student. Survival skills to higher order skills, to changing stimuli for a requisite outcome. Most importantly, changing the curriculum, changing, changing the syllabus, changing the complete approach for the kind of outcome that we want. And finally, every child getting learning at a similar level or at least what we can say which is kind of similar so at this point again i would uh, try to bring back people to the same conversation that should impact be the focus of our learning should we always be reinforcing re, uh, you know giving stimuli to students that should it be impact driven or should it again only be driven towards content driven towards gaining a content or creating some difference in the society or creating some of the other impact let me invite the next school leader for today, Mrs. Vidya Murli Dharan, the principal of Army Public School from Hyderabad, Telangana. Vidya, I'm over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute your audio and a very warm welcome. Yeah, thank you first for having me in the show and greetings to all my fellow panelists uh, out here. I think this uh, pandemic has definitely actually given us a pause and probably made us rethink as to what we are uh, doing and are we doing it the right way. And uh, when we think about having an impact, I think probably uh, what is learning without having an impact? I think it doesn't have any purpose at the end of the day. So I think to uh, have an impact, I think uh, to influence the society for a better cause or to provide solutions to the societal uh, challenges, I think uh, that should definitely be uh, one of the objectives of uh, learning. But when you see today's uh, education system, it, it's highly data driven and it is focusing on the standardized tests. So at the end of the day, when you've got the grades and marks, it's gratifying and probably that is the yardstick for people to measure your success or uh, the progress. And is this what we are aiming for in an education system? The data actually, when you take, it drives the decisions, but humans make the decisions. So I think it's very important to invest time in rethinking and restructuring. What are we going, what are we doing to the human uh, capital of today, whom we uh, think or the future generations who will actually do something for the society. And that is why we all learn. So when we look at the corporate houses, even they, actually uh, imbibe the culture of learning into the system. Let me take about Elon Musk. Here's three important things which is said, which make sure you're building a tree of knowledge and not facing it up, uh, not the outward facing method, which is a cramming. So, and uh, even in corporate houses, they do not encourage this. And connections power your learning. You cannot remember what you cannot connect to. That is where the real life experiences come into being. And finally, the experiential growth. When the first two are taken care of, when the, it is nurtured, and then when we 
lay the foundation for the next level. I think the exponential growth is uh, unpreventable. It, it does happen. See, at APS Golconda, we do a few things which I thought I would share. First is a multidisciplinary learning, disciplinary learning. We try and integrate all the concepts, all the subjects to make it holistic, where the students can make connections and then learn, uh, learn to connect to the real life. This is one thing which we do. And then give them an experience, uh, learn uh, experience of learning. So we all know what you hear, you forget, and what you see, you remember, and what you do, you understand. So I think this is probably one thing which we follow. And then integrating of skills is a very important part of, should be a part of all curriculum. And design thinking pressure cooker method, I think this is what is being propagated throughout India through the design. Um, Thank you so much, Hidya, ma'am. The three minutes are over. Let me try to summarize what you said and take the discussion forward from there. Uh, you started with what is learning without impact? And I think that's where the idea or the concept or the topic for today's talk actually came in that if learning really doesn't make a difference in the society or in the community around it all, then learning, does it really make any sense? Then impact can be one aspect of it, but it cannot be the focus of learning. I think uh, it, this is where we would rather differ a little bit on this because uh, if it's not impactful, if it does not really change things around you, it's just content. It's not learning, but that, that's an opinion. <laughs> uh, data drives decisions, but students take those decisions. And when we get into that decision-making part of it or the problem-solving part of it, that's where the impact becomes critical. And that's where their skill becomes even more critical of taking those decisions. Uh, and most importantly, building a tree of knowledge and giving them connections so that sting things stay with them. And I think impact is the easiest way that you can bring all these together. Whenever you want to teach them something, let them figure out how does it impact them, the people around them, and all the stakeholders involved in the complete ecosystem. So thank you so much, ma'am. Let me invite the next speaker for today, Mr. K. Rupesh Kumar, Principal of JKK Nataraja Matriculation Higher Secondary School from Tamil Nadu. Uh, Rupesh ji, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute your audio and a very warm welcome. Uh, good evening. And uh, we thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to share my views here. The word the points that I would regard to register here is when you talk about education, the first question rises here is education really happened? What is this impact? Has that impact taken place? I start with only two questions. What is education? Many of us with our topics heading, making learning impact driven. Learning, what is learning? First of all, we have not got a clear basic idea of what is learning. Have we acquired something? Learning takes place by some experience through which we gain some knowledge and we try to share it in such a way that the society is benefited. And then comes study. Study is a comparison or a case study which enables the skills and understanding of that interpersonal skills, what is gained by that particular student or a person. And he tries to make it intrapersonal. This interpersonal skills and intrapersonal skills, has it been actually nurtured? Press rightly said when an education takes place without any kind of an impact for the society, improving the standard, uh, living standard of human being, without understanding application, then what is the use of education? As the conversation begin with, is it for uh, employment? Is it for money? Is it for understanding? It is for wisdom. This question today, it is actually unanswered. This COVID is one such situation which has brought us some kind of a wisdom saying that if we, the so-called elderly people who are term to be educated people. If that real education has taken place, online classes would not have dropped in strength. Second, if the value of education and the purpose of education was really realized and enjoyed by us, we would have taken some steps for our younger generation to get a proper education. Still, we are not in such a situation to declare the purpose of education, whether the benefits of education has been reaped or not. 
So on that basis, as rightly said by my previous speaker, most of the education is data driven. It is purely mark oriented. What is it, whether it is understanding, whether it's application, whether it is developing ourselves, whether it is serving, whether it is purposeful or utilizing, all this is a question. When a person is completing a particular degree with uh, four years of completion, it is certifying that the person has completed the course. The certificate certifies the person has completed the course, but not qualified. Then where has the education taken place? What has happened to education? Then the second term comes in. What is education? How to start with? If you can remember still when we teach our children, we are we are ready to come out with a few uh, uh, rhymes saying uh, twinkle twinkle little star and baba black sheep is there a situation prevailing today which is able to recall one of the latest rhymes with a rhyming word that is a question mark that is a question mark a really a question mark there were some kind of a practice in the name of dictation that then uh, saying some tables there was something called uh, a respect manners as we learned something that was integrated into our day to day life. But is it happening today? No, it is all around some kind of coaching classes, some kind of uh, competitive examinations, mm -hmm. some kind of data that says last cutoff was this, you have to work for this. If you work like this, you will get it. And there are so many things which has named this education as commercialized activity instead of life building activity. The teachers are being branded as nation builders. Are we really building our nation? That is a question mark today. Even today, may... Thank you so much, Rupesh. Sir. Let me try to summarize what you said. I think you added a couple of very important and pertinent points to the discussion. Uh, you started with, has education really happened? Are we able to evaluate it in a position when it has you know, done its complete effect or we have its complete effect on a student? Because right now the student is only judged for the content that he's accumulated. If he's not judged on the learning that he's acquired, the you know, behavioral change that has actually come in him or the kind of development to his personality that has happened. You further moved on to learning is acquiring for the society's benefit. And I think this is a very critical thing when we you know, try to discuss a topic like this, that impact, why is it important? It's important because all this learning was finally to build a community. It was to bring all these humans together. If you want to bring all these humans together, if you want them to grow, and if you do not think of their benefit as a community, does learning really solve its purpose? Or have we really realized the value and purpose of education? And most importantly, where you concluded, certification or qualification. I think these two words rather sum up the complete story that are you really working only for that certification or do you really want to be qualified? Thank you so much, sir. Let me invite the next speaker for today, Mrs. Tulsi Nanda, the principal of Hashem Blooms from Hyderabad, Telangana. Tulsi, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes and a very warm welcome. Happy evening to all. Very wonderful topic, actually, sir, you have brought here. As uh, being the school leader, we all are aware of that. What is the quality of a good teacher when she has to touch every child of the class and she has to bring the best from every child, which I personally feel. For that, I think the very the easy steps and very useful step, which everyone has to follow that in their school and might be we all are doing. First thing is life skill, which I feel. Why the teacher is teaching that topic? That's very important. If in the class 30 students are there, so obviously every student is different. So our teachers or whoever is going, whether me and anyone, is she aware about uh, multiple intelligence? Are they sub? Uh, aware of that, how to touch every child, because every child is having some best, best quality, some strength actually. So who has to identify that? So that connection the teacher has to make through the life scape. It means every topic is related to our life that the teacher has to understand here. And the second thing is making the choices for the student. Generally what happens, we used to bring in the class, this is the way only you have to study. But here we have to give the lot of options. And the good part is, uh, in, in, especially in this pandemic, we our teachers have learned a lot, actually, how the visual impact, what the other activities, hands-on activities, so many things are there. So here the choices should be given. If we are talking about the impact in learning, here it's very important to give the choice. As we know that choice is very important, not the chance of uh, anyone, actually. 
And the third thing, which I feel that is very, very important, self-evaluation. What we do, what I am doing, I should know that, let me to correct myself. Let me to understand what I have done. So these are the very important things where we need to bring the real learning in the class. Why are we learning, how to learn and what to learn? If these are the basic things we'll do, then obviously the impact of the learning will be very uh, good in our country. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Tulsi ma'am. Let me try to summarize what you said. Most importantly, keep asking this question to yourself as an educator that why are you teaching a particular topic? What's the purpose or the objective that you wanted to actually meet? Or is the topic happening to you? Or are you really driving the topic to the student? Or is it just the content delivery that's happening? Being aware of every child's inner self. I think that's where personalized learning uh, used to happen in the classroom when the teacher used to know, okay, this child is notorious. This is the child who wants to learn more. He is a guy who's inquisitive. So knowing that was personalization till now with data and technology coming in, that personalization has gone to the next level. But even then, the gut feel of the teacher is far more critical than a data analytics system that's running on the basis of the student's choices. Because at the end of the day, giving him the opportunity to choose is where learning really lies. So trying to build his wisdom or his decision-making on things is critical. So I think self-evaluation makes the cut. And that's what's typically going to take go ahead in the discussion that how do we teach self-evaluation and evaluation also on the basis of not just the certification, but impact or how is it going to change society around you? Thank you so much, ma'am. Let me invite the next speaker for today. Ms. Mary Shanti Priya, principal of Vista School from Hyderabad, Telangana. Mary, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes and a very warm uh, th Thank you so much, Baksh. Good evening to all my fellow panelists. Uh, the topic learning being impact driven, I would say learning was always impact driven. But only the number of people who made the impact were very few. So the objective was learning was always employability or earning or wisdom or understanding. So here we are grouped together to understand what is that we can do where we can increase the number of learners who can make a major impact. So keeping that in mind, I was thinking that we need to create a kind of a culture into the schools where we have an open-mindedness for growth, which is very, very important. It is not just the teachers or the students. It is every stakeholder who's going to be part of the learning you know, ecosystem, which is very important. It involves even the parents too. All of us should also be open-minded to take in feedback. We should teach people to give great feedback, which is very, very important. So that would be the next step where we can think we can make a learning more impactful. We should always keep in mind to take a 360 degrees development reviews, which will make a difference in making the learning more impactful. We need to set in goals within our own teams. At the same time, we need to emphasize more on collaborative learning also. If we can keep these five things in mind, I'm sure the objective of learning will be more to make an impact rather than an employability. Because all those who have made success, all of them were students, they have learned, but their objective was to make an impact, not for employability. So if we can pick up and work on these five keynote points, I would surely say that our certification will be with qualification and every qualified will be certified also. So I would uh, surely say learning is impactful. Only thing, channelizing it properly and being more focused is what is required. As I said, again, I want to retrace the five. All of us should be open-minded for growth. When I say all of us, it is not we educators alone, not teachers alone. Even the parents also need to be open-minded for things. We need to take a 360 degrees review whether what we are teaching is making an impact or not. So when we talk of everyone's review is very important. We need to set in goals for ourselves, for each team, because only when you have a goal, you know whether you've reached it, you made a difference or you made an impact or not. And all this is possible when we have an ecosystem, which is more of a collaborative or a peer learning. Thank you so much, Laksh. Thank you so much, ma'am. Let me try to summarize what you said. 
uh, increasing the number of learners who can make impact. And I think yeah, that's quite a, a good rephrasing of the topic that it's not just about impact driven, it's also a lot about increasing the number of learners who have impact as their objective in life and not just employability. Uh, you talked about open-mindedness for growth and as a complete ecosystem, we becoming more and more open-minded to things that are happening around us. Teaching feedback, giving and receiving. So I think this is something that we need to teach all the students. And I think most of the communication experts globally get taught in this, which we call appreciative inquiry, that if you are being given a feedback, take that positively, but don't take it personally. If you are giving a feedback, give it in an objective way and don't make it very individualistic. And finally, collaborative learning. I think these would add to the complete discussion of making learning impact driven. But again, I would still have a simple question in mind that I would again want to put to everyone. Can impact be really the sole focus of education or is it the sole focus of education? So let me invite the next speaker now, uh, Mrs. B. Nanda Venugopal, the principal of Police Public School from Bengaluru, Karnataka. Nanda, I'm over to you for the next three minutes. A very warm welcome. Thank you, sir. Good evening to all. Uh, happy Teacher's Day. Uh, making learning impact driven, uh, it would be aptly correlated with the Benjamin Franklin, uh, Franklin quotes. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. Learning is a dynamic process which is indeed continuous. And then when learning takes place, we can see that uh, the learner acquires knowledge, the learner acquires skills, and then the learner acquires competencies. Learning, of course, uh, the learning involved augments the learner's cognitive domain, be it uh, short term or be it long term. For me, I would uh, analyze uh, this uh, impactful learning uh, under three headings. First, the teacher and the teaching process, the child and the learner, and then, of course, the physical environment. The teacher need to understand the impact of a teaching, whether the teaching concept is relevant for that particular target group, for that particular grade. As our NEP emphasizes, I would emphasize on, I believe, that joyful learning, experiential learning, and art integration, or be it uh, sports integration or ICT integration, surely will induce an impactful learning on the part of the learner. And then, of course, uh, the latest one, teaching the, the foundational stage in the mother tongue, I think that would create a fearless, fearless environment for the children for them to learn in a comfortable language. And then this would, of course, uh, directly uh, induce a high esteem in the child and provides a positive learning environment. And then when learning is impact driven, it reduces the dropout rate in later in the higher education. And then of course it improves our result. Learning can be made impact driven when teaching is relevant as I earlier emphasized. And then teaching can happen when various factors are taken into consideration. For example, when you take the child from known aspect to an unknown aspect, and then when you teach simpler aspects first and then move on to the complex aspects, when easy to difficult and then from concrete to abstract, from particular to general and so on. For example, if the child is able to identify the different gadgets, suppose if you're going to give an assorted equipment for a child, maybe spoons, maybe glasses, maybe plates. So the first, the child should be able to identify the water spoon is, what um, glass is, what a plate is, and then afterwards when it is given mixed, the child will be able to sort it out. So this is the concept here. And then coming the, uh, to the teacher's learning process, I think all of us are very well aware of the five E's. Uh, engage, then explore, then explain, elaborate, and evaluate. When a teacher adopts all these in a teaching, I'm sure impactful learning will take place. Moving to the learner, I think the readiness of the learner will play a very crucial role uh, in bringing out an impactful learning. For example, when uh, listening is taking place, uh, the, it may be a voluntary attention, it may be an involuntary attention, or it may be a selective attention. Again, when we look into the uh, learning styles of a child, all of us are very well aware of the work. The way there are visual learners, there are oral or auditory learners, and there, there are kinesthetic learners. When our teaching is able to cater to all these varied uh, uh, styles of learning, I think uh, there may be, uh, there may, a positive learning may take place. And then uh, moving on uh, uh, to the environmental factors, I think uh, as uh, our first speaker spoke, uh, the mental condition, the emotional condition of the 
Thank you so much, Nandana. The three minutes are over. Let me try to summarize again. Take some of the important points ahead. Uh, always understanding the teacher and the teaching process, taking into consideration both the aspects of it, the child and the learner. Relevance being the most critical element in the complete process, because if you're teaching something that's relevant, that's relatable, that reaches to the child, and then he can really think of making his own learning process more impactful or impact-driven. Uh, engagement for the learner through relevance, language, positive learning environments. And I think at this point uh, is where impact really comes in. Because when you talk about his learning, making an impact in the society, it typically brings all these things together. If he wants to make an impact, he has to be, you know, understanding or rather accommodative of the local language of the environment that, where he is in, the kind of knowledge that he has and the kind of application environment that he'll go into. And finally, from particular to general and from concrete to abstract. So I think with the topic as well, we are also trying to do this, that from a concrete system that teaches to an abstract system that inspires impact. So let me go to the next speaker for today. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Ashok uh, Mankadari, the principal of Highway English School from Kalur, Karnataka. Akashofji, over to you for the next three minutes. A very warm welcome. Very good evening to everyone. All the educators here are with the noble thoughts, uh, but still... Uh, uh, I, Mr. Albert Einstein had said that education is what remains after one's forgotten everything, what he has learned in the school. But here, the education, what we are providing at this particular point of time, the, uh, the retention of that is very, very minimal. To be frank enough, for one of our uh, previous speakers, they were talking about NEP. Prior to NEP, there was a small, uh, what do you say, a survey which was done uh, across uh, the nation with respect to 10th uh, standard students to see whether they'll be able to solve a fifth standard problem in science or maths or any other thing. Uh, but the, the retention of knowledge or recalling of that was a very minute particle. Why was that happened? When the survey went across and when the investigation happened, the, uh, uh, the government of educa education understood that, that it is not impact driven, it is only as uh, learning as, as what you mentioned as utility based that students are driven yeah students are driven not towards impact students were driven towards marks uh, I'll tell you why marks though all of our teachers use five E's uh, in the school to uh, to teach but the end of the day the, uh, the the pride the prestige or the esteem of students acquired due to the marks is what emph get emphasized across the societal, uh, the neighbor comes and says, oh, you got 95%. Oh, fantastic. So that is what they require, the pat on the back. So because of which the impact of educational driven is missing nowadays. I'm not denying that our educators are not doing it, but end of the day, parents, they expect this example, if I need to talk about is if you're connecting it to the 158th episode of uh, topic, critical thinking, that should be essential when the teaching is happening, which will connect, okay, which will basically connect with identifying the diagnose and develop so, uh, solutions and actions to the societal issues, real societal issues. Only then they understand where to apply. As I was mentioning in my last session as well, what they learn, as Rupesh was saying that experience is what education. Yes, to acquire that experience, whatever 30% is learned across their education life is what they can acquire that experience through education, uh, experience and get educated. That's what I'll try to mention. And... Uh, Rest everything everyone has mentioned about it, but still, they say, right, when everything is fine, there's a fine tune that we need to be required to reach the destination with a beautiful taste. That taste is missing at this point of time because of certain small. Ashok said the three minutes are over, but some amazing thoughts. Let me try to take them forward. Uh, education is what remains once you forget everything else or rather you, once you forget whatever you have been taught and something that remains with you. This go, if we you know, put it in Hindi, the first is uh, uh, Janna, then Chintan and finally Manan. So that Manan aspect is what is important that what remains with you or what becomes a part of you. Because once you're gaining content, it's basically somebody else's information that's coming to you. 
but once you have put your knowledge in it your personality into it that's when it becomes yours so i think this is very important to understand that why is all the sense of accomplishment only instrained in the marks that you get and not in all the impact that you create as a student as a teacher or as a parent in the complete community thank you so much so let me invite the next speaker for today uh, mr viraj naidu the principal of the people grove school from chittu district andhra pradesh viraj ji over to you for the next 3 minutes a very warm welcome uh yeah good evening uh, daksh and good evening to all the esteemed speakers um uh, i i just saw that daksh has thrown a bit of a googly at us because he said he suddenly asked as to should it be impact driven <laughs> so so uh, all our prep, all my exam preparation for this talk has gone for a toss so now i'm thinking uh, but i think it is is given us a very good cue actually uh, is what i felt it's like so actually what you said daksh makes me question right now and i was thinking isn't that what is at the heart of education and uh, is and and where does it where does it start from where do we build this culture like you know many and i mean all of us have all the uh, principals here have said things which we you know which which makes uh, you know which is going out of the content going out of the syllabus looking at uh, skills of the students not looking at content all i mean all of us are speaking more or less similar things but i think the challenge that we face is how do we actually bring it inside the classroom that challenge is something that we are if i if we are honest if i am honest at least we are uh, facing it in us in my school i am sure we are facing it in our school how do we actually make it happen at the ground level so i was so some of, i i thought i would share some of my thoughts on that uh, is that i thought to myself that first it should start with me as the leader of the school if i we are the leader of the school first of all can i sometimes say i don't know can i sometimes say uh, i need to learn <laughs> can i sometimes say that okay let's have a discussion on this and see how we can solve this problem uh, you know i i think that it will have to start with us relearning actually because it's not just the we know what to do but i think we we are all quite babies <laughs> as even heads of school we are babies in terms of how to do it and nothing to blame in that because we didn't we never experienced this we never really most of us in our lives we have never experienced an institution which was actually a learning place we went to places which were teaching places we never went to a place which was a learning place <laughs> you know uh, so uh, so we have to reinvent this whole thing and that requires i think that's one of the reasons i felt that some uh, forum like this is important uh, so i want to thank you for that because we are all actually need to brainstorm and find out how do we actually do this how do we you know we teach these students about bloom's taxonomy we teach them about the learning style we do all these things but somewhere we are not satisfied because actually inside the classroom somewhere the uh, the syllabus still comes this big thing called the syllabus and somewhere no matter how much we talk about marks not being important it does become important <laughs> so we we just you know at the end of the day we are again back to the same thing so i i think somewhere we will really have to we need a more focused uh, discussion on that touch uh, uh, so i i am i'm grateful to you that you asked this question that should it be because i think before we even go to the impact i think first thing we need to ask ourselves is how will we even create an environment uh, in our teachers how do we uh, enable our teachers to overcome this fear because we are all with this fear if my students don't do well in the exams then what will my management tell me it's a it's a genuine fear so we say you do all these things but finally we still expect them to do you know you still have to finish that syllabus you still have to get that marks and so then if you continue with that how are you going to all that we have spoken about how how will you make that happen inside this box that we built how can we come out of this box is something that is i feel uh, something for us to think about i'll stop there daksh uh, thank you very much yeah thank you so much viraj and i think <clears throat> you're very right when you're saying that we are typically going to a lot of teaching places not to a lot of learning places and that's where the real challenge comes in we all know what has to be done but we don't know how to do it because at this moment the brand of just marks is so strong that everything else just goes for a toss so the branding of these marks and these examinations is so strong that you can never make a dent even in the whole ecosystem because whatever you try to do at the end of the day there's a big hammer just hanging above your head that if you don't get those kind of marks even as a teacher as a student then nothing works or nothing is good enough so i think we now need to find more ways of building that sense of achievement that even if you don't have marks do you have something else to talk about 
Do you have some achievement that you have with you? Do you have a portfolio of things that you've done? So we'll have to find out more and more ways of giving students challenges where they create something that at least starts building a brand that's equal to the marks that they get. So thank you so much, all the speakers. We have listened to your opening thoughts or rather the first comments on the topic. Now it's an open floor for the next five to 10 minutes. If you want to say something, if you got muted, if there's an important point that you want to add to the complete discussion, if there's something that you could not speak, this is the time you can just raise your hand, I'll take your name and you can take the next 60 seconds. Try to keep, keep it as crisp as possible so that we're able to conclude on time. Uh, so anybody who wants to add something to discussion, you can put your hand up and the next one minute is yours. Uh, yes, Viraji, please. Yeah, so no, I was just thinking, uh, you know, based on what we just discussed, uh, I think one of the things that we have to see is how do we, because this whole fear, right, that we all have, the teachers, even the principals have the fear, <laughs> because we have to, we are, we are accountable to the management, finally. So we, we want to do all these things, but then we are scared. So I think one of the things that comes to my mind right now is about how can we be independent, truly independent? Can we make, can we, can we be an, can we be an example to our students of being an independent? Independent means not depending on all these things for calling myself a successful person, but only depending on my skill or my capability. And there I think is, again, it starts from us, right? I mean, if I believe in my teacher, if I believe in my teacher and say, look, I, I, I know that even if your students are not going, you know, getting this 80 or 90%, but I know that you are instilling in them that confidence that is going to do something to them in life. And if it's really genuine, then I think the teacher will then transmit it in their class. Uh, but this is something which is uh, easier said than done. <laughs> so uh, I would now like to invite uh, Srija ma'am, the principal of SNS Academy, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Daksh, for uh, arranging such kind of uh, forum where we are discussing about the impact of education. Actually, impact-driven education is uh, a must or it is a mandatory. We have to change our education system from the industry point of view or from the colonial education system to the right impactful learning. So impact-driven education, when we talk about impact-driven education, it engages the learner or it engages the learner to collaborate with the multidisciplinary solutions and also of identifying the solutions for wicked problems or the real time problems which are there in the societal stakeholders. So it is actually making a question among us that are we really creating a global citizen? Are we making the children ready for this global citizenship or the global economy? Because all this employment which is available now may not be there after 10 years or 15 years, which we have to enable the learners ready for that. So for that, we have to make them ready for the 21st century skills. And these 21st century skills, when we are creating in the learner, it makes the impactful learning. And we at SNS Academy provide this through the design thinking based curriculum and also our five pillar approach. So design thinking curriculum makes the learner to identify the challenge and then identify the theory, what they are learning. So the learner is understanding why do I learn it? that makes the impact of learning in her and also the five pillar approach that is we are making them to connect with industries and through this their self-confidence increases and they are understanding what is actually the challenge and how to resolve the challenge and i'm very sure cbse is going in the same line through the competency enhancement and competency based education and nep 2020 is also paving the route in the same line and here I would like to tell you that we have to enable this impact-driven learning mainly through three aspects. That is by providing the problem-based learning to the children and by developing a clear achievable learning goals. And also by giving regular and focused feedback to the teacher and also to the learner. Feedback to the learner alone is not complete. The feedback from the learner to the teacher is also equally important. That makes the exact impact what we are expecting is happening among the children. So impact-driven learning is must for developing the employability skills in the children and also all the 21st century learning, which is enabling them to be a real citizen, a global citizen. 
so i think we at sns through a fingerprint approach where we are understanding as rightly some earlier uh, members were telling that each child is unique so according to that we have a fingerprint approach and also the five pillar approach through which we are able to make the impact of learning among the children that's what i have to tell you thank you for making such a great uh, discussion thank you mr daksh and uh, the entire team thank you so much ajay ma'am yes uh, personalized format of uh, you know uh, deciphering education giving those feedback mechanisms putting these things in place might work but at this point my question again comes back to the same uh, question that i had put in the initial times of this discussion that is or can impact be the sole focus or not the sole focus but the most important focus element of the complete learning process over to vidya ma'am for the next 60 seconds she wanted to add something ma'am over to you uh yeah thank you i think I, one of the speaker just mentioned that we need to finish the syllabus and then we need to please the management i think i uh, sort of agree with him because i think most of our schools or uh, educational institutions do not have we are not autonomous you know we don't have that kind of a, a, a power to decide what we want to do we have some kind of a policy either given by a society or management and whatever so in this case i think when you take the case of the foreign uh, countries i think the school is completely pretty much autonomous and the kind of uh, learning which they impart to the students or the kind of grading it's actually validated so in our country i think that validation of the school uh, probably uh, needs to be uh, thought about as maybe as a part of the policy that's what uh, i think and even when you do something qualitative adding some skills or something i think there's no particular rubrics to measure what kind of a quality you have Uh, embedded in the system, and uh, if we probably think about all these things, uh, probably as you say, the it could have a larger impact, which could uh, maybe make a difference to probably generally the mankind. Yeah. So uh, when we really want to change the community or the society around us, we need that kind of acceptability and freedom to come with it. Because as a school, or when we talk of India as a country specifically. we are quite uh, you know i would not rather use this word but yes we are quite changed in, in the policy metrics of it we cannot move beyond regulation uh, this statement should not be said but it it is to be said that in india education is the most regulated business because from the end where you receive revenues to the end where you spend them everything is regulated at every step and when at, in such a scenario you want to create a space for a student to learn it becomes a challenge and it becomes rather a very big challenge to handle over to ashok ji for the next uh, 60 seconds he wanted to add something please unmute yourself okay uh, as uh, viraj sir was saying we do we don't know where to induce this particular type of impact when learning uh, as ma'am was also mentioning vidya ma'am was valid wherein it is not uh, uh, autonomous fantastic but when we need to think of introducing we can't go with the symptoms which is there in grade 8 9 and 10 because it is that is not a stage where we can uh, treat the root cause so root cause has to be start dealt it in the primary or a kindergarten area so when we need to introduce if we introduce from kindergarten till grade 7 it may take 2 3 years for the students to get adjusted to the new impact driven learning methodology where they're going to gain a lot of knowledge and a lot of education that will be uh, that is actually a proven i can say because a uh, couple of things i have tested in my uh, school and the uh, outcome is amazing when we need to see and to be frank if uh, this also has a lot of small uh, things which were involved as peer teaching uh, there is no student is genius there will be groups of uh, students who will be sitting in uh, certain benches where it will be uh, a genius student or a mediocre or a poor student here they will be studying as a group so if a mediocre student has a doubt he may approach anyone if a, or if a poor student is able to solve the problem much before they can do it again it how they going to uh, again the societal uh, responsibilities how to mingle how to behave how to help and how to work out so all these things comes in so my only uh, thought to all of them 
whoever who wants to introduce probably it could be introduced in the beginning days from uh, kindergarten till grade seven so that it takes two three years for them to get in, uh, used to impact driven and that will be helpful for all of them so that marks will not be the constraint uh, with respect to eight nine and ten and we're going to affect their education in any way once that is done i'm i'm through that all all of us will be winners and it'll be a beautiful answer for that so i think uh, the point that you wanted to make was simply let's build a space of mind in all the learners that come to the school that you can think beyond marks marks if you're ready to you know accept the landscape the way it is marks will be there the branding will be there but are you ready to take a small little leap where you are ready to learn something that's more driven by life rather than just the numbers that you'll get at the end of the examination. Over to Mary Priya, ma'am, for the next 60 seconds. Please unmute yourself, ma'am. Uh, my question is to you, Daksh, because you've always been asking this question, is learning impact-driven? What do you feel? Isn't it an impact-driven? From what I have learned, I have passed out in 1989 as a student from grade 10 to where I am now. I've seen a change in the shift of the way the education system has moved. Yes, those days, awareness was very little. People spoke about it was very little. Only the actions were taken into account. But now we are talking more. We are also acting on it. Both of them are going hand in gloves. As you rightly said, a lot of regulations are there. But within those regulations also, I would say, it depends upon us as to how we can juggle. You know, constraints are there everywhere. Don't you think abroad schools don't have those constraints? It's not that. It is upon us how flexible we are. What is our purpose as a school principal or a leader? What is that we are looking forward for our school? So that is how the approach, the outlook is very important for a person. And if you as a head of the institution our vision and you know what you want to head for. I'm sure everyone will align if you're more logical, realistic, rather being more idealistic. Ideal situation, all of us want, but that needs to align ourselves with being more realistic too. If you can bridge them together, I'm sure our learning was impactful, will be impactful, and the amount of impact is going to be tremendous. Challenges are always there. Every field has its own challenges. If we keep harping about the challenges, we don't see the benefit of it. Yes, Absolutely. online classes have brought a dip in the uh, attendance. But at the same time, it is because of online, so many of us are able to connect. There is so much of taking away for us. As a principal, I take so much from each webinar, which I implement. And I can say that there has made a lot of difference into the school system from last year to now. It was something new. None of us know about it. It was like something all of us were learning. From last year to now, I'm sure every principal would agree that people have understood, thought that now moving forward, this would be one of the platform of learning also for certain mindset, how you look at, how you approach, look into the best for the worst also so that you know how you can deal with. That's it, Daksh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mary Ma'am. So uh, I think the main important element within this complete discussion is if we want to make it impact driven or if we want to make impact the focus of it, we will have to juggle. There is no other way of handling it. Things will remain the same way. And uh, when we try to juggle in this scenario, the biggest challenge that always gets posed in front of us is regulation. Because in some or the other way, anybody who wants to go even a little bit away from the line of thought has to fight a lot. So now, uh, since we are nearly at the conclusion of the call, I would request uh, Dr. Shauri Kutappa to give his closing thoughts on the topic for today so that we can move ahead in the discussion. Shauri, over to you for the next one or two minutes to give your closing thoughts on making learning impact driven. Uh, Dutch, thank you. Um, by, by no means, I don't want my, to, my thoughts to be the closing ones. I'm just a small pawn here. There's, there's a lot of enriching. This. There are a lot of enriched people here in the group. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, from what I've heard, from what I've gathered, and uh, from what I've had my eyes open in the last few minutes, here are a few um, you know thoughts. Number one, 
uh, education versus learning are they the same thing or are they different if, uh, education is finite learning is so there is a difference you know learning is a long progress uh, education is something that is controlled uh, the word impact number 2 the word impact uh, when it, if you say impact it needs to be measured if something is not measured then you can't say that you know there is impact so therefore there needs to be some measure number 3 there needs to be something at the tip of the triangle you know for for any system to go there needs to be something at the tip of the triangle and there needs to be a defined ladder okay step 1 this step 2 this step 3 this so uh, that's when you can call something as impactful lastly uh dhirubhai ambani was he educated or was he learned a learned person gautam buddha was he educated or was he a learned person you know i have not heard of the degrees or the doctorates that gautam buddha possessed at the same time um, uh, uh, if the purpose of education is to give back to society where would you rate uh, mr dhirubhai ambari yeah so um, i'll close I'll, i'll close with that thank you so much thank you so much for it and yes education versus learning learning is something that's infinite and education is something that's finite so when we entered this discussion of talking about impact the biggest challenge that finally came out of it after listening to so many school leaders so many opinions that came out i think the biggest challenge is how to get it running how to make it executable within that small little institution that we have with that big little big and larger than life regulation that con- controls it can we be those amazing jugglers now while juggling with students for such a long time we found one way of doing it let's build a brand of things that are not conventional let's brand inspiration let's brand things that go other than the conventional mode of education and learning and that's where the idea of blub world simply came in where we started finding stories of teens who were doing amazingly well so one such story for all of you before this call comes to an end this story is of a little girl who's a teenager right now she started you know typically learning a hobby from her mother of making candy she started making candy at home over a course of time learned it the craft even better learned the business of end of it and right now that teenager sells her candy across the biggest retail chain in the us and we call her the candy printer and that's elena moss who's right now a millionaire only out of selling candy and she's still a teenager and that's what we thought would be a good way to typically tell everyone how to in- do introduce or infuse impact and we started building this story of teens who were making life impactful for everyone around them not just for themselves and that's where the idea of building the world's biggest parliament of teenagers came into existence we invite all of you all the teenagers around you to be a part of the world teen parliament if they can solve a problem with their capabilities the world teen parliament will mentor them will train them and fund them to realize their vision of the future that they think so we're thankful to the partners who are helping us build the world teen parliament a very big thank you to the speakers who came in today to share their ideas with us and most importantly remember the only thing that we could learn out of working with these many teens these many principals these many school leaders education is something if we talk of india that's already a subject that cannot become a business and education must not be a business in any sense understanding the initiative the soul of it and finally building a way where you can inspire rather than just teach Thank you so much everyone for being a part of the Glove World Web Talks 163rd episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did and if you want to attend the future sessions, you can open up your audio and say a big yes and thank you so much everyone for being a part of this and have an amazing evening ahead. Namaste. A university where future is driven by imagination. Experiential learning creates diverse opportunities where industry exposure and international partnerships help you sail. Come Start your journey towards success with Amrita University.